for everybody out there, if y'all watch this, just make sure. Even if your baby father say, yo, I don't want to be a part of it, yo, my nigga, step up. Step up and just be in there. If you're a black woman, tell your nigga to stay up, step up. Because they out here trying to take y'all out. Take y'all out. And like, we don't I don't get know. the same care. We do not get the same care. I don't know if if it might sound really bad right now how I say it, but I don't know if y'all pass away and these hospitals get more money. But yo, they trying to take y'all out. So I decided that I want to bring my husband on this like postpartum video because he's like my security blanket and I don't want to get like emotional and weird on the video by myself just sitting in front of the camera. So plus he was there and he started to like get more vocal than I did it towards the end because it was getting out of hand. Like it was getting out of hand. I'll start. I'll start with um, after I had the baby. So after we had the baby, um, they were like, oh, we're going to put you on magnesium for another 24 hours. I'm good for that. At this point, I'm pissed because I'm hungry. Like, before my appointment, I didn't eat. And then they, I ate a banana at my mom's house when we dropped the kids mm. off. But then after that, I didn't eat anything until, like, the nurses snuck me, like, a turkey sandwich or something before I went to the labor and delivery suite. So I'm, like, starving. It's been, like, two days, and I had a turkey sandwich and a banana. Like, I'm going a, I'm to a vouch. I was there with her. I ain't, Most niggas would have probably just been like, y'all going to eat? I ate shit that she couldn't eat. Yeah. Like that she doesn't like. Like I had like I had for two days was crab legs. I ate crab legs for two days. I made that shit stretch. And I don't eat I don't eat seafood. Like I mean I eat fish. I don't eat crab I don't eat shellfish. So I didn't care if you ate that. That wasn't anything your mom's calling. I know. That wasn't anything that was like tempting <laughs> or like would get me upset. Yeah. So I was just like, whatever, I don't care if you eat it it's actually smell it stunk. It it wasn't appealing to me at all. Other than that, <laughs> she didn't eat, I didn't eat. If she was able to eat her ice pop, I'll let her eat that. You didn't ice eat pop. again though until it was till we got moved to yeah. I didn't eat unless she ate. I mean Yeah. So if we go if she going through it, we both will go through it. Fuck it. She was starving for days. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> we both gonna go through it because it's not I'm not gonna die. One of the nurses was stupid. like the nurse was like, You're so noble. Cause like he really he really starved with me because I couldn't eat for another day. Like That's rough. Like how you gonna how you gonna I don't eat when your your wife about to give you a kid. Not even a, don't even care if it's your wife. Somebody about to bring your kid out. You gonna eat in front of them if they can't eat? That's rough. That's <laughs> he wild. know how much I love my food too, man. You feel me? That was a big sacrifice, okay? Especially because the baby was here. Like I want to eat. Like, but anyway, um, moving on. So they were like, we're gonna keep you in a magnesium for another twenty four hours, which, which means I couldn't eat. I still couldn't get out of the bed. I'm still hooked up to a damn catheter. And at this point, it was at nighttime. The Jeezy and Gucci um, battle had came on. So he put it on his phone. And we actually had a really cool nurse at that time. Like, she was the coolest nurse ever during that time. Black like, nurse. Yes, for the culture. Like, it all worked out during that time. We got to enjoy it. Yeah. Like, she was cool as hell. So we enjoyed it. We enjoyed the battle or whatever. We had a good time. We asked her, like, who you got, Jeezy or, or Gucci? She like, Jeezy. We like... We team Gucci, but we still fuck with you. <laughs> she was cool. Um, it didn't, it was really pretty much cool until they moved us to our like recovery suite. That's when it started to get like horrible. So after you have a baby, first thing you want to do besides eat is take a nice shower. Like you want to take a nice shower because you feel so dirty. You are dirty. Like you've been sweating, you're bleeding. Like everything is just, it's uncomfortable. You want to take a good shower. I literally got in the shower and the stream felt like I can't even like, okay, like a sprinkler. Like, you know how like sprinkler, like pressure, like you put it in your yard and it's just kind of like, uh, whatever, like, <laughs> it don't really like do nothing. That's how it was like feeling on my skins and the water did not get hot. Like it got like lukewarm at best. Like it did not get hot. It actually felt kind of like cold, like mm -hmm. chilly. Like you're like chilly in the shower. It was bad. It was bad cold. Cause it would, it would get lukewarm and then it would go to cold. Like you would be sitting in there trying to like just sit there and get acclimated to the water. You're just like chilling in the water and then it's like i i can take this warmness and then it's like nah i'm about to get cold now like i'm dirty like i just had a baby like i need a good shower so he just so happened to be like coming in to check on me like he was like i think you picked your head and he was like hey if you need help like taking a shower and i'm boo crying in there <laughs> like i'm i walk in i'm like 
Yo, you straight? And I just, she turns to me and it's just tears coming out. <laughs> I was so sad about it. I'm like, yo, you good, my nigga? <laughs> She's like, no, this is the worst shower ever. I'm so dirty. Blah, blah, blah. And she's just like, I'm like, yo, bro, chill out, bro. Like, chill out, my nigga. <laughs> He's like, it's okay. I'm like, it's not okay. <laughs> like, I felt, I felt so like dirty. Like, he like, you got your Dr. Bronner's. Like, the Dr. Bronner's don't feel like he's doing nothing because this water is so trash. I feel like if people are paying, like, you're gonna bill us for this kind of stuff. You need to make sure the facilities are like up to par. Come like, get that money and blood, cut. Yeah, yeah, you're not getting nothing. Like, I'm not ever paying y'all. Y'all can kiss my whole ass. Cock suckers. I'm not ever paying y'all. <laughs> never, <laughs> never, never. I'm gonna let it sit on there for seven years and disappear. I'm never paying y'all. You heard. <laughs> See this video can get the money and blood cut. You heard. It is what it is. So anyway, I take my shower. I still feel like shit after. He tried to he tried to make me feel better. I come out. He, she said something like, "Oh, you look sexy." Like I just did not feel sexy. The nurses that were coming in, they kept giving me, and I didn't question it at this point. They were giving me Motrin. They, were, they kept asking me like, "Do you are you having any pain?" And I'm telling them like. No, they're like pushing on my stomach. You know, the normal stuff. They push on your stomach to make sure you, your uterus is like cool and all that. And they're like, are you having any pain? I'm like, no. But then they were like, okay, well, we think you should just take Motrin. Um, just take it just in case or whatever. And I'm like, all right. So they're giving it to me like round the clock for like a whole day, right? And I'm not thinking anything of it. My blood pressure is not going underneath the, the thing that needs to go under. So I don't remember what prompted me to like Google. It was just, I think it's. I saw a commercial. Sister. No, I saw a commercial about taking, um, it was like some kind of like medicine or whatever. And it was like, may increase blood pressure or something like that. That's what actually prompted me to Google it. So I'm like, what have I been doing? I haven't been able to like really eat anything crazy or do anything crazy. So I'm like, I'm laying in, I'm laying in bed. Like, and so I Google Motrin and it actually pops right up. Not recommended for patients with hypertension. I have severe hypertension. This is what they diagnosed me with, severe preeclampsia. Not regular preeclampsia, severe to the point where they're worried I'm gonna have a seizure or a stroke. So why in the world would y'all be giving me motion, especially when I'm declining? I'm like, no, nah, I don't think I need anything. Y'all are like, nah, we think you should take it. After she told me that, I was just like, decline everything that they're giving from now on. Like just. I told them instead of, uh, cause I did start to have a little bit of pain. I started to get like stiff and stuff on my neck and my back and stuff. Cause I had been laying in bed for days. Like, and my legs were like really stiff and stuff. So I'm like, I am having pain. So I asked for Tylenol instead of uh, Motrin. Cause Tylenol is not the same. It don't have the same properties. Like it doesn't affect your blood pressure. So I started to get a really, really bad migraine. Like bad. Like the lights were, the lights were really dim in there. So it wasn't like. It was from the lights or nothing crazy like that. The TV's like way, on a, like it wasn't anything like that. It was like a 17 inch TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was real little. Uh -huh. So I knew it wasn't anything like light sensitivity or something. It was just like I had a really bad migraine. And so my blood pressure was still like high. So um, the doctor called the little hospital phone that's like on the bed or whatever. And I answered it and she's like, do you, we're going to give you a um, cocktail. She, this is what she called it, a migraine cocktail to like help with your headache and i'm like okay what's in it no i was like okay he was like ask him what's in it and i'm like well what's in it so she tells me the things and he's like google it so i'm like google i'm on the house i'm on the hospital phone and i'm like googling the um ingredients that she's telling me is in the cocktail in the top two ingredients it was like two ingredients and benadryl so she was like you're gonna be drowsy blah blah so i'm like okay benadryl whatever like benadryl is benadryl but the two ingredients were reglin and um I forget the other one, but they both popped up and said not for hypertension. It it will raise your it's gonna raise your blood pressure. So I'm like, why why y'all keep trying to give me stuff that y'all know is gonna raise my blood pressure when my blood pressure is already pushing one six? It's like it was like one sixty five over like one ten at this point. Like it's ridiculous. Why are y'all trying to give me more stuff that, to raise it? Like. And I'm asking, like, am I going to be able to go home? They're like, oh, we, you can't go home until you get your blood pressure under control. But y'all giving me stuff that's not going to get my blood pressure under control. So I talked to my sister, who's a nurse, on the phone. And I'm like, um, I'm talking to her and I'm telling her, like, yeah, they try to give me A, B, and C. And she's like, they should know that that's unacceptable. She was like, you learned that, like, real early on in, in nursing school. Like, what they shouldn't say. Like, if you were able to Google it, they knew that already that they should have been trying to give that to you. And I'm like, so what's, like, y'all trying to kill me? Like, y'all so worried I'm going to have a seizure or a stroke? Why are y'all giving me this kind of stuff? Like, 
I don't get it. Like, are y'all trying to hurt me? <laughs> I don't get it. Next thing I know, I'm like, I'm just trying to like relax and stuff. And I like take a sip. They keep giving me ice water. Like, who drinks ice water? Like, <clears throat> you're not supposed to drink cold, cold water. Like, why y'all keep giving me ice water? And so I take, um, I drink some of my, I'm feeling like dehydrated almost. So I'm drinking like my ice water or whatever. And then I like put my bed back and I'm like laying back. And I know where I just start freaking shaking, like uncontrollably. Like I'm like trying not to bite my tongue. Like that's so hard I'm like shaking. And then how long did that go on? That went for like a good 20. 20, it was Maybe that long? 20 to like a half an hour. Oh you know what I mean? God. It was bad. Like it was, it was bad to the point where I didn't know what was happening. Cause I'm like, the shivers just came out of nowhere. It was literally like she was drinking the ice water. <clears throat> Excuse me, she cool. And then she goes back, like she literally leans back, and then like two minutes after that, it's over. She's just shivering, like shivering bad. So I'm just sitting there, like I'm trying my hardest, like I'm just like rubbing her down, like yo, like what's up? And I asked him, I was like, he's turning the heat up. He was like, it's on 75, but I'm like, it was hot as fuck. I'm freezing, like so freezing. Like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to figure out, like what the hell, son. So I'm like. It was to the point where I had to go to the bathroom. And, like, I went to the bathroom. And, like, I just started praying. Like, I already started praying. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck are they doing, son? Like, what's happening? Like, what's, what's really going on? I think that the nurses and stuff were very upset because we declined the C-19 um, test. So, I think that, like, it, it's obviously they have to, like, put it in your chart. Like, oh, this patient refuses. So, you got to go in this room and wear all this extra stuff. So, I feel like, like a lot of them. They pay for it. They were so upset about it. Like, it was weird. They were cocksuckers. So I feel like that definitely motivated the treatment that I got. The shivers end, right? The shivers. We get to where we are able to get the shivers to end. I don't know if they gave you an IV. Remember, they wanted to give me, like, some... They was like, oh, we think you should take the COVID test now because shivers are a symptom of COVID. And I'm like... No. I said no, too. Yeah, I'm like, no. <laughs> They're like... Well, that is a symptom. We can give you some medicine through your IV. And I'm like, no, like I don't have COVID. Like, oh, I forgot to add. So let me go back real quick for to when after right after I had him, and I'm still like bedridden and all of that. So the people come in, you know, they give you like the verification, um, a birth letter, and all that kind of stuff. So why is nurse gonna say to me, "Here's your letter you need to get your benefits"? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I was asleep at this time. He was asleep. And I, the black nurse was working at that time. She just kind of like, you know, black, we got like a code. We know, like, you really got to say nothing. We got like a face we make or like a body, body language. And we'd be like, girl, <laughs> it was one of them. But she didn't say anything. Like, she was very professional. She didn't say nothing. So I was like, what benefits? This is literally how I asked her, like, what benefits? She was like, she going to try to clean it up tomorrow. Oh, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with wig. Like, bitch. You have great jobs. I, I'm, I, I think God, God, like God, be playing. Like He may, he, he not playing. He, he knows what he be doing. Like he just be like, yo, you're gonna be asleep at these times. He would have went. He probably would have lost his shit. What? We would have been able to leave that night. <laughs> you know? so, to leave that she night. trying to clean it up. It was like, oh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with WIC. And I was like, yeah, I don't qualify for WIC. I was like, I was like, the only thing my job requires is that I have my set my child's social security number to add to my insurance. Like, I had to be very specific with her. Like, I have a job and I have insurance. And you're not about to try to like, I know my name's Taquila. Y'all probably think. I don't know what y'all think. Like, y'all stereotypical. <clears throat> like, oh, this ghetto ass name. But like. Don't try to, don't do that. Like, don't do that. And then another thing they did, they're going to call me on the hospital phone talking about, are you legally married? No, I just put it on, it just says married just because, like. When I was asleep. Don't be dumb. Yeah, I couldn't have been awake for this. She would have told me this and I would have, I would have had to open the door like, yo, y'all good? I don't remember, honestly, I don't remember what you were doing. I don't even know, but I was just like, yeah, I'm legally married. And they were like, okay. I guess they were like trying to get, because if you're not married, they have to have like a notary come in and like do all that whole thing. Sign the, when you're married, they don't have to, he don't have to sign the birth certificate. He's just on the birth certificate because you were married. But they really called to like verify, are you legally married? No, I just put married. My stuff just says married, just, just for shits and giggles. Like, what do you think? We're the same legal last name. Like, don't be dumb. Mind you, 
we had like dry blood in the fucking in in the in the in in the in the bathroom. We ain't say nothing about that. Yeah. Like in the crack. Okay, so the like cracks. you thought it was me. I'm like, no, that was there when we got here. I saw it. Like behind. Okay, so like it was a wall where the toilet is on. You know how the the, the tiles are when yeah. it's like when it's like one tile, then you got like the white marks through the tiles, and it's like, like the caulking. That's what it's caulk, called. You yeah. have a caulk through the tiles on the wall where the wall goes, and then you got the the, the floor. I mean, there's a caulk line. That whole caulk line where the wall was at got had blood in it. I'm thinking it was hers. And she's like, nah, it been there. And I'm like, so yeah, we I didn't we didn't go near that. It was only in that one. I didn't take another shower until we left. Yeah, I refuse. To, I'm not gonna put myself through that kind of toilet. You know, really upset me. There were three of them in there, and they all lined up to where they blocked me from being able to see my husband. I don't like that. And when I saw it, when when that happened. That's when one. That's when the main nurse came and asked me, like, "Are you good? Like, everything is good." We normally tend to like tend tend to not not work with the the husband or the baby father and see how you are doing and blah 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 all this other shit. I didn't even know that happened. That's what she said. Yeah, she was like, "Are you good? Like, are you straight? Are you mentally good?" So, yeah, I'm good. I'm straight. I got everything down packed. I'm just trying to get my wife right. This is when they came in first, like when she was having the shivers. That's when they came and told me. So then the nurses blocked me, so she couldn't see me. But I'm looking at the nurses. I see these hoes, and these and one of the the one that the main nurse is talking like, yo, you should take the COVID test. Blah 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 blah. She's like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to take it. So then one nurse is like slapping the main nurse like, yo, chill, stop. It's over. Don't don't even talk about it no more. Like like don't do it. Oh, no I didn't even see that. I didn't. She was I like, don't do it that. no more. No, no, no. Like, just chill out. And that's when they started saying, or they were saying some stupid shit like. The responsible thing to do would be to take a COVID test. And they're like, oh, if you don't want to do the COVID test, but you take a flu test. Remember they asked me, did I want to take a flu test? And I'm like, no, I don't want to do any of your tests. I don't want to do any of your tests. Like, I don't have freaking COVID or the flu. Like, I don't. They were just very pushy. Very. It was like uncomfortable pushy. Like, why are y'all so pressuring me to take this? Like, what's even, going it wasn't on? Like, organized. it was very un like to the point. It was almost to the point where it's like you don't got a choice. You might as well just do it. Yeah, like I feel like if I didn't have like my own mind, I would have definitely did it. I would have did it early on because they were so pushy from the very beginning on me doing it that. If I would didn't have already my mind made up before I got to, because I had my mind made up before I got to, I knew they were yeah. gonna try that shit. I knew it before I got there. We had talked about this a month ago about they're gonna try to make me do the COVID test. That's the reason why we were originally trying to have the baby at home because I knew they were gonna try to push that weird COVID stuff. So I feel like if I didn't have my mind made up already, I definitely would have did it. Like any person that came in there and they kind of like were on the fence, they would have got you to do it. Yeah. They would have got you to do it because they were so pushy and so weird. Like, they were trying to, like, guilt trip you. But then they will also make it seem like they're concerned. Like, it was just real, like, it just wasn't right. They just didn't sit right with me. So, he started getting pissed off. Like, he started getting, like, he ended up, he was sitting down at first. And then he stood up and stood by the window. The window was, like, by the, like, next to the bed. Like, so he could see me or whatever. He ended up standing up next to the... You didn't sit down until it was time to go. Like, he stood up next no. to that window and just leaned up with his hoodie on. Like, you got me fucked up. It was up. because, like, <laughs> after she finished with the shivers and all that, I mean, they were, like... They were... It was... It was weird. And, like, I know... I know her. I know her and, like, I know how shit, shit, shit's supposed to go. So, like, she's never, ever got shivers in front of me. Never. Ever. Like, she's always hydrated. She's always good. I'm the one that does that. Like, I'm the <laughs> one that do it when I get too drunk. I get way too drunk. I don't eat. It happened one time. But that's, like, me, though. So, like, when that shit happened, I'm like, all right, I'm putting, I'm putting all my, I'm putting everything up. She's like, she don't feel good. She's not right. Like, everything is, like, so, the shivers end. When the shivers end, we're like, she's like, yo, I, I, I will feel better if we go home. Like, I'll feel way better at home. Like, I can take a shower. I can relax. I mean, I'll take care of uh, 
His name is Dante Jr., but nickname is Vegeta. Suck my dick. He's like, I can take care of Vegeta. You take care of the other two. I'm like, say no more. So the doctor come in. The doctor like, yo, we want to give you this, that, that, da 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 She says like 15 drugs, my nigga. Through your IV. So I'm, AKA, a- 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 I don't know what it is because it's on the bag and I can't really, I don't know what it is. I said, yo, we ready to go. Nah. Like. We, we spoke about it already, like, she's like, yo, I will feel 15, I'll feel a thousand percent better at home. And I'm like, all right, if you know you feel better at home, and you know that this is what you want to do, we out. Like, when she tells me, when she tells me something, she's like, yo, I'll ask, I'll ask one more time. I'll be like, yo, you good? You straight? You sure? And she said, yeah. When she said, yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure I can go, I'm like, all right, we out. So the doctor come back in there, like, yo, I want to give you this, that, and third. I'm like, nah. But I don't even know if you, did you answer? Mm-mm. I was done talking. I told him, I, I remember I said, I'm just going to relax. I'm trying to get my blood pressure down. I'm done. Like, I'm checked out. Like, I'm just trying to keep my blood pressure down and just relax at this point. So he was kind of like my mouthpiece at this point. Like, I'm I'm checked out. Yep. So I was just like, nah, we good. We ready to go. So no, no, no. Nah, not even that. <clears throat> I think once his shivers went down, I called the phone nurse. And I was like, um, I spoke to the nurse. I was like, yo, I think it's time for us to go. Like, we, we will feel well oh, yeah. better at home. So... The nurse, the nurse came in with a um IV pouch, IV pouch, ready to put an IV in her. And I'm like, yo, I don't think you should put that IV in, cause I already told the nurse that we want to go. So she, she got the, I guess the COVID stuff now. They got a little microphone on their thing, a little uh, a walkie-talkie on mm-hmm. their thing where they could just walkie-talkie the person. So she calls the nurse and the nurse goes. Yeah, they ready to. I think I don't know what the hell she said, but she was. She hit the nurse up like, "Yo, is should I give her an IV?" I then went to the bathroom, and I came back, and the IV was there, and the nurse wasn't there no more. Like that, she left the IV on her little stand and left, and that shit took like a good hour and a half for her to come back. And then she came back, and I think she was like, "Yeah, we get everything ready. Um, the the doctor for your your son." Um, <laughs> the doctor for your son is not ready yet, and he's doing some other bullshit. And once he's ready, we'll call him or some shit like they that. They try to delay it pretty much. They, they said, "Oh, your paperwork's ready for discharge, but the baby's isn't." Yeah, you gotta wait for the baby's the pediatrician for the baby. So and that like, took uh, so that after took the hour hours and a half, after the hour and a half wait and her to call and tell us that the pediatrician ain't ready. It took another two hours yeah. for the pediatrician to come in and took another hour and no, it took another half an hour for the nurse to come in and just discharge us all. So it took about four hours for us to leave that hospital. And I definitely think that was intentional because as many times as the pediatrician came in the room, it was like clock. They were in there way more for him than they were for me. So it's like now when all of we a sudden. We were downstairs. We was downstairs yeah, the night before. Now like when all of a sudden when it's time for us to leave and we got to wait on a pediatrician, we got to wait hours for him to come in. Like, but he's supposedly on our floor already. Mm-hmm. Y'all just trying to be funny. Like, y'all mad because I don't want to be here and I'm declining all y'all extra medicine. Because I feel like they were going to try to be sneaky and give me that COVID medicine even though I said I didn't want it. Yeah. So. And. I don't know what kind of little bread y'all get for giving medicine, but stop. They get sucking. money. Ugh. They get money for any kind of C-19 treatment. They give test, flu stuff. They get money for that. Was that We ended up um, discharging against their like medical opinion or whatever. So I had to sign these waivers, which was fine, saying that like if I went home and anything happened, it would be on me because my blood pressure and all that. And actually, since I've been home, my blood pressure has been going down. And it discharged me with blood pressure medicine, and um, I haven't been taking it. I decided to just take other supplements. Like, I take magnesium. I take, I do um, apple cider vinegar shot every day. I do, like, all my vitamins. I have, like, a whole round of vitamins that I do instead of taking that medicine, and my blood pressure has been going down. Like, the last time I checked it, it was, like, 145 over 98 or something like that. 
which is a big difference from 165 over 10110. So, bro, literally when we got into the house, her blood pressure went down. It was down. Literally, once we, I feel like once we got into her car, our whole her whole mood changed. Mm-hmm. I need some fresh air. Like I just felt a lot better not being in that freaking hospital bed. So, yeah, and I don't have anxiety problems, but I was starting to get like anxiety in there. Like I'm the one with the anxiety. Problem. Yeah. So for her to get have that, it's not right. It was. I was feeling so like I. I just wasn't feeling feeling like myself. I felt like real vulnerable and like. I don't know, like, especially when I found out they were giving me medicine that was going to raise my blood pressure and work against the medicine that they were supposed to give me for my blood pressure to lower it. I was like, y'all want something else. Like, y'all clearly not trying to work for me and work for my blood, like, help my blood pressure. Y'all can't be. That's when I had to step in. Yeah. Because like, I already seen, I seen her getting very, very, like, she was getting angry, but then she was just like, she was more of like a sad, depressed. Oh yeah, real sad. So it was just like I seen that. I'm like, yo, and I'm I, I just I had to get to the root of it. Like I had to talk to her, and when I'm getting talked to her, she's like, yo, it's more of just me being here. So it's like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to make sure I had to ask more than once. Like, yo, you sure we go home? You sure we're gonna be able to get this straight? Are you sure? You gonna be able to monitor your 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 blood pressure at home? Like you sure you are gonna be able to take your medicine at all this time? Are you gonna take your iron pills this time? You gonna do this that and third? And she said yeah. And I've been taking she's them. She's been doing all that. She's been on top of it. And he knows as long as we've been together, I don't never take my. I'm anemic. I've been anemic forever. I never take my iron, but I've been on top of all of that because I know that like your blood affects everything like you know what i'm saying like i want my like iron and everything to be up the my hemoglobin because my hemo hemoglobin is usually really really low like always so i've been just trying to make sure i'm like on top of like taking my vitamins and my supplements and like it's been working so i don't even take that and, and then they're gonna send me home with the dang old motrin and my um discharge medicine like if y'all don't stop trying to give me this medicine that's not it's gonna work against the blood pressure medicine, like what's wrong with y'all? For real, for real. That's just a money thing, I guess. What's that saying? The money's in the treatment and not in the cure. That's what mm -hmm. it is. Y'all want me to stay there longer so y'all can keep billing my insurance. Y'all wanna bill me for all this medicine y'all keep giving me, but y'all not really trying to fix the problem. Like, and it's already scary because black women be dying in hospitals having babies every day, like at like much higher rates than anybody else like so it just made me really really uncomfortable when i google a medicine a simple google popped up that i shouldn't be taking it they were ridiculous it was it was bad i'm just happy we're home and since i've been home like we said i've been doing a lot better baby's perfect like he's gaining his weight he was born four weeks four weeks early so that was like a big concern with like kids that are born a little early he's not like a technically a preemie preemie he's a late preterm baby so He's like cool, but he's gaining his weight. He's perfect. I'm good to go. I'm great. Like I he got feel... a little bit of gray in his eyes, like Papa. Yeah, R.I.P. So... My guy. So he's perfect. I'm good. I'm gonna be good. I'm just gonna keep taking care of myself at home, drinking my teas, taking my supplements, and I'm gonna be all right. But I had to get up out of there. And I don't want to hear, oh, it's not a race thing. It is. That's 100% it, is. It 100% is. Statistics will tell you that we die at a much higher rate than anybody else when we give birth. And then I love During everybody. During birth and after, and, and the aftercare that we get. That's a fact. Like, I don't care what nobody, don't come on here. Come on, oh, it couldn't have been a race thing. It had to be. It had to be. I have insurance. I have good, I have great insurance. Great. Great insurance. <laughs> And if and if she don't got great insurance, I have insurance that overlap that insurance. So we, have we have great insurance. Great insurance. We need advocates, especially when they be trying to drug us up and do all this and that to us when we're like in our weakest moments and stuff. Like we definitely need our men to like step up and be like our advocate. Like no, step up, my nigga. No, step we're not up, doing bro. that. She's not doing that. You want to see my son? Look, ah, y'all niggas suck my dick. We out. <laughs>